Hello friends, welcome to another intriguing edition of Rahul's Advanced Biology. Today I will bring you a very ecstatic topic, a very relevant topic in SCOV19 and Lerolimab. It's a monoclonal antibody. Now for the beginners, I would like to inform you that the World Health Organization has already declared this SARS-CoV-2 virus induced COVID-19 as a global pandemic. More than 7 million people have already been affected by it and more than 4 lakh people have already lost their lives. So scientists all over the world have been trying really meticulously in order to come up with various vaccine regimens and various drugs in order to curb and curtail this specific pandemic. In my previous videos, I have already described to you the pathophysiology and the virology of SARS-CoV-2 and why men are more affected than what is called women. I have also explained to you the various drugs like chloroquine plus azithromycin, tocilizumab and remdesivir which has already received the emergency use authorization from Food and Drug Administration USA. I have also explained to you the alternative receptor for SARS-CoV-2 known as CD147 along with the primary receptor H2. In today's video, we will be talking about a monoclonal antibody known as Redolimab which has shown promise in the treatment of COVID-19 patients specifically who are critically ill COVID-19 patients. So before jumping on to the mechanistic action of Redolimab, let me explain to you how does SARS-CoV-2 really infect you in a brief map. So what happens is SARS-CoV-2 is a positive sense single-stranded RNA virus, a non-segmented RNA virus which has got a genome size of about 30 kilo base pairs and it has got spike protein, membrane proteins and it has got nucleocapsid, it has got the enveloped proteins, it's an enveloped virus. Now what happens is the primary spike protein, it has to be cleaved First, it binds to the H2 receptor, but before the binding, it is needed to be primed. The priming event is done by a specific serine protease known as transmembrane serine protease type 2, TMPRSS2, expressed by the pneumocytes, the ciliated epithelial cells of the nostrils, the goblet cells, and the specific enterocytes also. So, after this priming event, the two specific subunits known as S1, which has got the receptor binding domain, and S2, which has got the membrane anchoring domain, they both get formed. And the receptor binding domain RBD present in the S1 subunit binds to the H2 receptor which is a type 1 membrane protein again expressed on various cells like type 2 pneumocytes, type 1 pneumocytes, heart, liver, kidney, endothelium etc. And then the viral ingress happens and then what happens is it goes through via the endosomal route, the ergic pathway and then the havoc starts, it commences. So what happens is the cytokine release syndrome or the cytokine storm to be layman is a specific cytokine release syndrome or is a specific release of various cytokines which really wreak havoc, which really hyperinflammate the entire body, which really cause hyperinflammation, overinflammation, by recruitment of various cytokines like IL-6, specifically the pro-inflammatory cytokines like IL-1, IL-6, then GMCSF, GCSF, TNF-alpha. Right, IL-17, IL-23, so and also activates the NF-kappa B pathway. So all this culminate into various organ damages, multiple organ failure. Then also results in, you can say, the premature death and also the ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome in the respiratory tract, which again leads to the death of the individual suffering from this specific SARS-CoV-2 virus induced COVID-19. So what is Renolimab? Renolimab has been developed by a company known as Cytodine. It's a specific humanized recombinant monoclonal antibody against the IgG G4 antibody of humans and it again induces least complementary response and least neutralizing antibody. Now why it was made? Now there are specific chemotactic factors like CCL5, CCL4, the CCL family, chemokine, CC motif, ligand. You can say, I'll explain to you the CCL5 first. Now CCL5, you might have heard of CXC, CXCR4, CCR5, so CCR5 and CXCR4, these are the receptors in the, you can say, leukocytes. And these are the co-receptors for HIV. So this drug is also known as Pro140 and is being developed by cytodine specifically for HIV patients, specifically infected with the R5 HIV1 strain and it is to be given subcutaneously per week. Now this drug what it does is, 
it binds to the CCR5 receptor. Now what is CCR5? CCR5, CX, CR4 belong to the G protein coupled receptor family, larger super family of membrane proteins, the serpentine family. And what happens is, they, they are ligands, their positive ligands are CCL5, CCL4. So you can call them the agonists. Now specifically CCL5, CCL5 that is chemokine CC motif ligand 5 CCL5 also known as Rantes regulated on activation normal T cell expressed and secreted. This Rantes binds to specifically CCR5 the receptor chemokine receptor 5 and this CCR5 is expressed on dendritic cells, T cells, macrophages, eosinophils, microglia and also CCR5 has been found to be upregulated or expressed in specific cancer subpopulations like prostate and breast cancer epithelial cells. It is not expressed on non-cancerous prostate and breast cancer epithelial cells. And what happens is, after binding to this, it causes calcium mobilization and then it also acts as a chemotactic factor for various immune cells, T cells, dendritic cells, neutrophils, which will come, which will be recruited to the site of inflammation, to the site of action, and they will again cause multiple cytokine release and will also cause hyperinflammation. So what happens is this relonlimab is a specific drug which is given via subcutaneous route and what it can do it, it can antagonize CCR5 receptor. So in a specific clinical trial, 10 COVID-19 patients who were critically ill were taken into consideration. And then what was seen, first they were, their blood work was done and plasma IL-6 level was quite high because they were suffering from cytokine relief syndrome which made them critically ill in the first place. And their CD8 plus cells had also plummeted lymphocytopenia, their granzyme A pathway, the specific granzyme A got downregulated, and granzymes, specifically granzyme A and B, which are the most predominant granzymes, are also expressed on T cells, natural killer cells, natural killer T cells, and T cells with gamma delta specific T cells. Also, for the first time, it was seen that in their blood, the CCL5 level was too high. It was skyrocketing. RNA sequencing was also done later on. So first of all, they were given or they were administered 700 mg dose of this map monoclonal antibody for two weeks. After day four or five, again their blood work was done and single cell RNA sequencing was also performed. It showed that plasma IL-6 level plummeted, granzyme A level escalated a bit and CD4 to CD8 plus T cell ratio became all right and the person recovered from lymphocytopenia. Also, the CCL5, chemokine CC motif ligand 5, which is a chemotactic factor for various immune cells, also got down-regulated. And the patients were able to recover. So it was a very, very positive trial. And now they are moving on to a bigger clinical trial, phase 2 clinical trial. So what happens is, the mechanism of action was, you can say that CCR5 is the receptor and this map is specifically punched to CCR5. It doesn't cause allosteric inhibition. What it does is, it binds to CCR5 via competitive mechanism and it takes out or it doesn't let the CCL5 ligand to bind and agonize it via competitive inhibition, competitive mechanism. But after the binding of map, the CCR5 expression in the cells doesn't get plummeted. Also, the expression of the CCR5 doesn't get plummeted and the number of the cells expressing CCR5, those number of the cells also do not get plummeted. What happens is it only seizes the CCL5 binding to CCR5 and thereby seizes the calcium mobilization and thereby seizes or stops the further intracellular signaling via the G-protein coupled receptor pathway. Thereby, it can stop the chemotactic action of CCL5 and put a break to the cytokine release syndrome. 
and in this paper granzyme A was escalated but not to a higher extent because we know that the human beings express five types of granzymes specific serine protease family granzyme A, granzyme B, granzyme H, K, M so what happens is we all know and in my previous video also I have made a video on interleukin 6 I will be making videos on interleukin 1, GM, CSF, TNF alpha so what happens is cytokine release syndrome is the epicenter why the specific COVID-19 patients, few COVID-19 patients become critically ill and they suffer from ARDS. You can take also the example of IL-6 trans signaling, which I have explained also. The GP130 dimerization takes place after the soluble IL-6 receptor binds to IL-6 and that comes and binds to the GP130 protein expressed on almost all the cell types and tissues and then it leads to the overexpression of vascular endothelial growth factor, IL-8, IL-6 and to the down-regulated expression of e cadherin a endothelial cadherin leading to the increase or enhancement in vascular permeability this is one of the hallmarks of ARDS so that's how it is really commenced and one has got to think of a way to completely stop or cease the cytokine release syndrome if at all one wants to save any kind of deaths happening via COVID-19 so there are drugs known as brutal tyrosine kinase inhibitors also which I'll be dealing in my next video which have shown promise, acylabrutinib or acylabrutinib you can call it. So those drugs and this map, this specific monoclonal antibody has shown a lot of promise. It down regulates the CCR5 activity via inhibiting the CCL5 binding to CCR5 and thereby completely seizes the specific chemotactic effect of or effect generated or perpetrated by CCL5. So that's all, that's all the conceptual progress you need to have in order to comprehend this lecture. If you have any doubts, any queries, do not hesitate to post your comments on the comment section below. And if you have liked the video, kindly hit the like button. And in the description section below, I have provided the link to the research paper, which I have quoted. It's still in the non-peer review stage. So I'll share the link and I have shared the link there and I've also shared the links of my previous COVID-19 videos you can refer to them as per your wish and I've also posted my Facebook page link you can directly contact me via messenger to get my prompt reply again if you have liked the video kindly subscribe to my channel Rahul's Advanced Biology and also hit the notification bell so as to be notified whenever my next video comes online thanks a lot see you soon